All right, uh, Mr. Rupert Holland, welcome to uh, Countdown and to Australia. Thank you. Right, well, I didn't know much about you until the Immunity album came out. And as I've just told you before the interview, it became one of my absolute favourites. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, of how you got into music, and then into record production? It goes back probably longer than I'd like to admit. Right. Uh, but my first album that I actually made myself wasn't until 1970, it came out in 71. Right. And I, that came out on Deep Purple's record label. It was nothing connected with heavy metal music at all. Mm. But I'd known uh, both Roger Glover and Ian Gillen for some time before that, when they used to be in a kind of surf group, believe it or not. Mm. Um, and I got to know them, and they had their own record label by then, and Roger Glover produced my first solo album. Then he gave me the opportunity to produce my second solo album myself, which was in 1973. Mm. Both these albums didn't really do anything very substantial. Mm. <clears throat> but having produced the second album, then um, I was asked to produce other people, sort of almost immediately. Mm. The first, first one was Yvonne Elliman, right. who at that time was still playing Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, from then I've done about 50 albums, I think. Well, I was going to say, then as a producer, suddenly I realised the name Rupert Hine was the, the same Rupert Hine. Yeah. Um, as a performer, uh, which do you like doing, producing or and performing? Uh, I, I mean, it's a sort of cliche, but both, you know, both are really very, very natural to me. I mean, it, the easiest way of explaining it is my first joy is certainly making records right. above all other. That's what I really enjoy doing the most. So, production really started in, in so far as I can't make records for myself all year round and release six albums. I mean, uh, so when I'm not making albums for myself, uh, there's nothing I'd rather do than make albums with and for other people. Right now, when did you team up with your co songwriter, Ivan? Uh, Jeanette. Jeanette. I think of Ivan Elman. <laughs> we'll take that one again. When did you team up with Jeanette as your, uh, your co-songwriter? Um, well, I've known Jeanette for about seven or eight years right. now. When I met her, she was, had already been writing poetry for many years and was probably even more so a painter, but uh, had a very high creative output. And right. it didn't seem uh, too far removed to try and convert her poetic sort of inclination, if you like, into, into lyrics. It took her a while just to get used to having to deal with rhythmical meters and mm. things. Uh, but she'd also been a great music lover all her life, a great record lover. So it just took two or three years for her to feel really comfortable herself that she was getting to express herself honestly and still vividly. Um, so I think the first record we released together was a, one I had a band called Quantum Jump, right. which was 76 to kind of 78, around that time. Mm. And uh, we had a one hit in, in England uh, with a track called The Lone Ranger. But we wrote a song called No American Starship, right. which I remember is the first song that we co-wrote together that was released. So that was about five years ago. Now, with, um, with, with a lot of your songs, the, um, the lyrics, first of all, I think the melody is very easy to get into. Uh, and that's the first thing that strikes you. And then you start looking at the lyrics and they're pretty involved lyrics mm -hmm. in a lot of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, are they hard? Do you get the lyrics first and then put it to music? Uh, I'd say about 80% of the time it's the lyrics first. Right. Uh, that's built on the premise that, as far as Jeanette and I are concerned, music is first and foremost a form of communication right. for us. I mean, sure, there is dance music and there's various other kinds of music, but for us it's a form of communication. Right. And uh, therefore the lyric, just by definition, has to come first. I often feel that writing the music is rather like writing the music for film. I mean, mm -hmm. you're writing it descriptively, you're writing it to generate and assist all the images within the yeah. lyrics. Occasionally, we've written the other way around, and that's also been good fun. But well, it was strange for, 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 for someone like myself, because it, like, for instance, with surface tension, you, you, you hear the song, and I think, I mean, a listener tends to make up their own images um, while they're listening to a song. And then the film clip came out, and I believe that you make your own film clips. Yeah. Is that an afterthought, after you've done the song, and then you have uh, to put the images to it? In Surface Tension's case, uh, it, was, it was more of an afterthought. That, that's the one exception there. Right. With the other films that we've done, they've been very much integral images from the word go. The problem with Surface Tension, in a way, was it relied so heavily on its ambiguity right. that uh, you know, it, images are, are less ambiguous unless you're going to be really abstract. So... Well, you seem to have a lot of fun with your film clips, yeah, storylines yeah. and that. Wh which is your favourite? Um, probably it's for the the setup, which right. was uh, released as a single off right. the last album. Uh, I'm, I've always been, when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a stuntman. 
as you can probably see, I don't really have the build for it. I was going to say, you, you, you tend to sort of become very sort of, well not physical, but you, there's a lot of physical um, uh, involvement with your film clips. I find that the whole idea of being, um, I'm sure people like mountain climbers or people who go parachuting for a hobby right. or whatever must get the same thing. There's a certain kind of adrenaline situation which makes you very clear-headed and you can quite often see uh, when you come out of a situation like that, it's almost, it's the kind of, it's nice when it stops syndrome. You get a very clear head and you can see maybe a whole pile of stuff that up to then you were really confused about quite clearly. Right. And I find that doing uh, a lot of these sort of stunt things, like in the setup, I was hanging from a, a wire at the, underneath a helicopter you know, for hours and this sort of thing. I mean, there's, uh, that maybe is not a lot of people's idea of fun, but it's actually really stimulating when you, right. it's, it's good when it stops. Sort of on the production side, as being a producer, it obviously gives you a lot of scope to work with a lot of other musicians who are extremely well known. Um, is that uh, creative for yourself? Yeah, I would certainly. I mean, I probably get a lot of ideas for my own records out of working with other people. Right. Although, interestingly enough, the ideas are usually the very antithesis of what I'm actually working on at that time. Right. So it's always it's reaction and anti-reaction. You know, if you're working. Let's um, give an example here. I did an album with Chris de Berg right. re recently. Now, Chris is obviously fairly straightforward in his approach to songwriting. I mean, he would self-admittedly uh, describe himself as being very unexperimental. Un it's not what he's interested in. It's natural kind of expression of his own ideas. Right. Correspondingly, when working with someone like Chris, the ideas that I'll be getting myself will probably be the most adventurous that I'll have at that time, because right. they'll be the antithesis of what I'm working on. If I'm working with someone like Robert Palmer, as I did recently, and Robert was um, trying to force all kinds of new areas f out of himself, mm. as well as me. Um, I think I got a couple of ideas when working with him that were really very, very solid kind of song mm. ideas, very simple ideas. It's kind of, it's, it's reaction and anti-reaction. It's, you know what I mean, rather than any yeah. kind of direct inspiration or, or borrowing, it, it's as if it always gets the opposite going in you. Right. But I think that's good. Putting you right on the line now, um there has been this, this talk about you coming down, so are you going to come down as a performer? Or is there a possibility you may come down just to check out and look at, say, producing someone in Australia? Um, <clears throat> I've actually got my manager, as at the moment, working on date juggling with this sort of thing in mind. Right. If, it's for my own, if it will be for my own appearance, I think it will be around uh, September period, September, right. October. Um, that obviously always dependent on how well things right. go, how well Obviously you're very aware of uh, quite a few Australian groups. I mean, Split Ends has worked yeah. in your studios as well. That's right. They did two arms at, at our, our studio. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there's been good sort of contact with Split Ends. I would love to, to work with them right. on, on this album. It looks real tricky to organise. Mm. But uh, there's certainly another band that I've had a tape of that I've been playing non-stop in the car. I mean, right. quite truthfully, for about the last week, which is a band called Little Heroes, right. I, I really like. Um, well, Again, you what, just you mention them, their manager's going to go, it'll make his day. <laughs> well, it's, it's absolutely I'll genuine. <laughs> <laughs> it's really genuine. Uh, it's actually in the car play right, right. now. But uh, it, as with all these things, it's a, it's a time element. I must right. say that the, the bands from Australia that I've heard, obviously we've, we've had people like Ice House currently successful over here, and, um, but the ones that you know, I haven't heard of until I get a tape mm. from, I would say generally the quality of tapes that I'm getting from Australian bands at the moment is better than the ones I'm getting from England. Uh, and that is not meant to be right. a soft soap, that's just no. that so many bands over here follow, you know, madly following fashions right now. There's a lack of kind of knowing where so-called originality is going to come from next step. So people are just falling immediately into kind of styles. Right. Now for me that little hero's tape that doesn't particularly fall into a style, it's just a very complete kind of feeling that seems to belong to that group of people.